Okay, I just want to slow down a little bit and show you the workflow inside MuseScore. Not just how to set it up, but what is actually happening. So here I have a MuseScore file loaded with two vocal parts, currently set to the default voices. <laughs> It's a basic choir sound. So we're going to put Kantai on both of these tracks and assign a voice to each one and then render it and then make some changes and then go from there. So we'll start here. And this is after the installation of the VST, obviously. It's going to appear in Kantai. The newer version will probably be in a Turing Opera Workshop folder. So here we go. This is for the soprano. And so first we pick a voice and then assign it to a track. And this is the MuseScore file that we're working in right now. And it's automatically rendering right now. Shouldn't take too long, it's not a very long piece. And while that's rendering, I will assign the second voice. And then rewind and play. So there we are, and it will stay in sync with the score. And the cool part about it is now you can just make some changes. Like for instance, if uh, I don't know, I want to re I want to transpose the entire score for whatever reason. We'll drop that down and while we're at it, let's change the tempo. So that basically means the entire score will need to be re-rendered. And so I'm just going to double check that everything is assigned and rendered. So two things about this are going to change with the two or three versions of the alpha that are coming out. The first version, which you see here, is the pre-alpha. And you notice that I have assigned the tracks. And when I made a change, I reassigned them. And there's this debug information and whatnot. That is going to be factored out. So you eventually will not need even to keep these windows open. <laughs> So that's it. I can continue writing in this file and arranging and, and moving things and transposing and changing lyrics. Uh, and uh, can't I will keep up. Like I said, the future version of this will uh, automatically watch the file and re-render as needed. So you won't have to do that manually. And just a, a mention here about how this fits into the overall workflow also is each of these is its own instance. It's, but they're both connected to your account, but they're separate instances here. So I can easily isolate. Wonder, wonder. And then play, play and mix just like I would any other VST. I got, I got a wonder, wonder. And you can add effects and you can do pretty much anything you can do with any other VST. And um, that is the current state of the alpha. One thing I will mention that's coming right up also is the project directory that we're in right now will be watched also, and the files that are created will be put there. Right now they're in kind of a system directory, but they will be moved, and you'll be able to take the WAV files that are generated, one per track, and then bring those into a DAW or something uh, some other program to edit them with. And that is it. Thank you very much.